So did you ever start any of the conventional treatments? I know you, you were you were faced with quite a task yes. from what the doctor told you. Did you ever start any or did you right away I think did. that? I did. I did the surgery, of course, sure. and then, then I did do, I did 10 treatments of the of the chemotherapy, which was the worst thing I ever did in my yeah, life. Yeah, what was that like? Well, it was hypothermia, and they would elevate my temperature as high as they could, over 105 and it was terrible. I mean, you're laying there and it's like with these weighted blankets, it was freezing to death and you're just like a jumping beam, you know, and you're freezing. So they give you this hypothermia serum and, uh, and uh, typhoid serum and they would inject that, it took about an hour to do that through an IV and then after they get your temperature up and get you all weighted down with the blankets, then they would start to uh, induce the uh, chemotherapy through another IV that took about eight hours. So I would lay there in the bed and have that done, but it was the worst thing I ever did because I just felt like I had the worst case of flu. I was lethargic. I couldn't eat. I couldn't, couldn't. I was throwing up. It was terrible. And uh, my body just didn't respond. And the doctor came in one day and he says to me, he says, you know, I'm sorry that you're so sick because your body's just not responding. He said, that's why. He says that if your body would respond the way we had hoped, you wouldn't be so sick. But uh, I was miserable. And I told him, I said, this is terrible. And he says, uh, well, I'm sorry, but that's all I know to do. I said, there's got to be something else I can do. He says, no, there's nothing. I said, what would you do for your son or daughter? He said, well, I'd do the same thing. And I said, even if it killed him, you'd do the same thing. He said, I could die in here from this stuff. He goes to me, he says, well, I, you know, we're all going to die someday. Just like that. Well, I raised up in that bed. And, you, you know, I'm not even going to tell you what I told him. I raised in that bed. It made me so mad because he was pulling this rug of hope out from under me. And I was so psyched up, even though I felt terrible, about my new treat my new natural treatments that I was going to do no matter what and I was only doing these conventional treatments because if a little's good a lot's better I wanted I wanted to get it all I wanted to do it all and I was going to fight like I'd never fought before but I told that doctor off I raised up in that bed and I tell you what I made a decision right then that I was going to fight, I was going to roll up my sleeves, and I was going for broke. I was going to go out there and I was going to take this, this macrobiotic diet and, and, and set the example. I wasn't going to do it halfway. I was going all out, just like that psychotherapist told me. I still hear him saying that. You got to do it the right way. There's two ways to do it, right or wrong. You do it the right way. And don't cut any corners. And, and I tell you what, that's exactly what I did. I got out of the hospital, I snuck out at two in the morning, like two nights later, and no one at that hospital even knew it because I snuck out down the hallway, down the stairs. I mean, I was so weak and so thin back then, but I wasn't gonna, I wasn't gonna stay in there any longer and find out what might happen next because every night somebody was dying. They would wheel somebody down that hall at night because not from cancer, but from uh, pneumonia or kidney failure or something like that, you know, or liver failure. You know, they, it's so toxic, this stuff, that I understand it's supposed to kill the bad and the good, but I just didn't want any more of it. And I decided that I was going all natural and I wasn't going to look back. And that's what I did. I never heard from that doctor again other than his office two years later. They want to know if I'm still alive. And uh, I, you know, no thanks to them, I still was. And I was on this macrobiotic diet, taking huge amounts of vitamin C, which uh, I read about in the book. And, you know, just exercising every day, uh, detoxifying. This diet is so powerful. And I'm surprised that people don't use it the way they used to because it's so powerful because you have all this fiber, 50% of it is whole organic grains, and even though people are kind of down on the grains now, but this is not flour products or cracked grains, this is whole grains that acts like a, just a broom of fiber. It just starts pushing all the toxicity out, helps to lower the effect of carbohydrates in the first place, and it also 
uh, contains like 25 percent or more of just all the cancer-fighting vegetables such as cruciferous vegetables, alien vegetables, all the vegetables that are anti-cancer that everyone should be eating lots of when they have cancer. But it had all that. It had, uh, you know, like probably 10% of the diet was soups, like miso soup every day, and vegetable soups, lots of soups, and, and uh, beans. We ate beans, vegetarian protein, lots of beans. Uh, like a dookie, lentils, chickpeas were our kind of our staple. But I never felt hungry as long as I ate three meals a day. And, uh, you know, I chewed my food. They said to chew your food 50 times a mouthful. What did I do? I did 180. I spent all my time chewing. But I tell you what, it really did help me a lot, that diet. And the vitamin C, when I started taking that, I could feel, well, I felt like a different person in three months. And I was, you know, walking. I didn't run anymore. I was doing deep breathing, stretching that they recommend, kind of yoga type stretches. Uh, you know, visualization. I visualized getting well every day. I had all these, these, uh, you know, I could imagine every cell in my body was fighting to get well. And, and you know, I just, I, I meditated. When I chewed my food all the time, that was like my meditation. You know, and it just relieved a ton of stress in the body and fear. And that's a big part of it. But the biggest part, I think, of everything I did was I believed in what I was doing. And that's 50% or more in your healing. And I think that's why a lot of people don't heal. They try this diet or that diet. Number one, they don't do it right. Number two, they didn't really believe in it that much. Or they're maybe seeing a doctor and he's saying, you know, I don't know about what you're doing over there. So they really have this negative kind of uh, push against them. They don't really feel, you know, like that positive. So you have to, and you've got to surround yourself with like-minded people, in my view. Uh, if you're living with someone that's negative about what you're doing or you've got your best friend is negative about what you're doing or your family, sometimes you have to pick up for a while and go somewhere, uh, you know, like I did. I ended up living at a macrobiotic community eventually and everybody was doing the same thing, eating and living the lifestyle. And it was so positive for me. It was like, you know, uh, the, the thing that the exact thing I needed at the time but it's so powerful to in all phases it's not just diet it's not you know just you know detoxification it's everything so it's like kind of like diet detoxification and supplementation which i learned about as i went along you know also doing special supplements so it's been a very powerful uh, quite a last 33 plus years <laughs> And I mean, knock on wood, you know, I've been very successful at this. And if I had to do it over again, I'd probably jump into a lot of other things quicker, you know, that, that have helped me a lot along the road.